God is good. We welcome you. Welcome you to the Mighty Sons of God Fellowship Church service. Thank you for those who participated with praise and worship. There is a word in the house I'm going to share with you on this afternoon. I want to bless the Lord for returning back to the state of New Jersey. God bless me in the state of Florida. Thank God for beautiful wife. Thank you for the treat to my family, to uh, all the McDuffies that went and celebrated for a few days. I needed that rest. I needed that breather, breather, but I'm back, back on my game, ready to go forward even stronger now until the end of this year. Just believe in God for some great things. Let's pray and let's get into what God showed me today for the people of God. Lord God, we thank you and praise you that you are the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're the Father of all glory and you give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ Jesus, that our eyes are enlightened, that we may know the hope of your calling, the glorious riches that are inside the saints and that exceeding greatness of your power to us work because Michael McDuffie believe according to the working of your mighty power which you exerted in Christ when you raise him from the dead far above all principalities and all powers and all mights and all dominions not only in this world but the world which is to come which is your body that fill of all in all in Christ Jesus name amen 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 we did a, a, a few weeks, uh, Andrea, God bless you, good morning, this image for you, Minister DJ, God bless you, uh, Sharon Bivens, God bless you, Andrea Carwa, God bless you. We do welcome you to the time of teaching and preaching. I want you to get your Bibles. I'm going to look at a topic today, a little bit different than we've been covering, but kind of like in the same mindset, and this is exactly how walking in the kingdom, Dina, is something you do on an everyday basis. It's not something that you do just on a Sunday morning. It's part of your lifestyle. It's part of what and what and who you are. And practicing walking in the spirit is not just avoiding certain sins. It's just learning to enjoy the atmosphere that God has brought you into. Heaven is a real place. The third heaven, the second heaven is a real spiritual place. Thank God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Sharon. And uh, we're walk we got to learn to walk in that place by faith and enjoy every day we've given. Even though we walk physically on the earth, the real thing is how aware are you of the spirit realm that's around you? And it's always on your mind to try to advance that kingdom no matter where you go. And so I'm going to look at a couple of scriptures. As you know, I've been talking about Joseph and Jacob and this restoration of the brothers. I talked last week about the turning of the tables. The tables have turned. And I want to show you some different things. Just show you exactly how the kingdom works inside of believers who understand the power thereof. And you come to find out that the kingdom unfolds, Minister DJ and AC and Pastor Sharon, not because they go to a service building. It just naturally comes out because that's just who they are. You see the kingdom coming out through Joseph because that's just who Joseph is. He's a son of God. You see the kingdom comes out of Moses because that's just who he is. You see the kingdom even flow through Samson, even though he was not a full obedient child of God, quite rebellious. But in spite of his rebellious ways, God still used him and then discard of him, discarded of him. So the kingdom of God will work through anyone who yields himself to the plan and the purposes of God. And my purpose here to let you know where you're sent from and what you're supposed to do. And then you're going to return back to that place to give an account on everything that God has given you to do. I got some props here today I'm going to try to use to try to explain to you more and more about the lifestyle of the kingdom. Say it again, the lifestyle of the kingdom. I love Virginia Shoulders and all those who are watching. And so I want to show you some portions of scripture that would challenge maybe some things you heard before. My job as an apostle and a prophet of radical change is to get you to see scripture from a different perspective and try to get you to understand that this life in Christ is an everyday, an everyday journey. It's walking and learning the atmosphere of heaven while you're on the earth. Well, we took a trip to Florida this past week and enjoyed some very great sights. I was spoiled by my wife and my daughter. And uh, it was a great trip to get out to go someplace. And I really enjoyed some of the stuff we saw, the rides, the, the explosives, the fireworks, uh, so many things to see. And quite expensive, though. You need money to go to these places. <laughs> and I, But the greatest of the trip was spending time with... Uh, uh, a total of 13 people, which included the McDuffies and some friends of the family and some relatives. And it was good to see a corporate people eating, walking, loving each other, having a good time, fun. But at the end of the day, they know McDuffie is going to be the preacher. 
He's going to share Christ in the kingdom. As I encourage my daughter and quite a few of the ladies that we had came on the trip with us, we give honor to two men. I also came from my brother, my younger brother, Jay, and a brother name. I'm going to call him Brother K. I won't say his name. And uh, these two brothers came and three of us covered all the other women that, that were out on the family trip. But I love it that the kingdom was exposed and walking through us without us having to work it up. Like we had to stir up some type of religious frenzy. It's just that we just naturally just enjoyed each other, loved on each other, and let the spirit of Christ just flow through us. And I want to talk more and more of walking in spirit, meaning bringing heaven on earth with you, learning to carry the container of God within you. We are what you call treasures, and there's glory hidden in earth and treasures. And we've got to learn how to open those treasures up and let it flow, flow through us naturally. That's something you work up. Something you got to change your clothes, put something on top of your head, you know. You got to do the Lord's Supper. You got to do all these religious gymnastics. When really, when you walk with the king, it is natural as breathing. Now, you're watching me teach here, okay? I'm not thinking about taking breaths. I'm just naturally breathing, and I'm just being Michael McDuffie. That should be the same, if not more so, from the spiritual side. As a son of God, as my son, as being a son of God Almighty, I want to be able to walk out the kingdom no matter what is around me and upon me and watch God move in me, through me, and all around me. And I really understand more and more about this song that Reverend Greg used to always talk about, Sent from Heaven. You know, it used to be sent by, sent by God, but I like to say sent from heaven. And that's deep because you're sent from heaven. And I don't think we understand that yet, that you're sent from heaven to come into earth to demonstrate heaven while you're here, to walk in, in, in a physical, tangible earth as really being connected to an invisible place. And what happens is that the invisible invades your visible. Your heaven invades your earth. And I think the more and more you become aware of that by faith and obedience to God, the more signs and wonders you see. You'll start seeing God do strategic chess moves with you and place you places. You get deals and breakthroughs all on little small levels and big levels. And all you can do is say, look like, look at God. That's all I say. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. And God would teach, show you so many things. Sometimes that's beyond people's denominationalism, beyond, beyond people's choke collars, beyond them being an apostle or prophet or bishop or Folks, the only thing God uses preachers to speak uh, wrong, God uses bishops and preachers to speak, but not all the time. He uses creation, he uses animals, he uses so many things. And as we understand how well or how good God has been to us, we can only be praiseworthy back to him, but we'll be obedient to him and don't be ashamed of him. Dina and Pastor Sharon and Andrea and Minister DJ and Virginia Shoulders and Thaddeus Parker. We have to figure out ways how we can honor God and be thankful to him for all the things he's given us. And the quickest way to be thankful to God is to make it your top priority to please him, to obey him. And when you slip, mess up or, be, or, or, or miss the mark, you confess it, turn away from it and you go for it. You do better and don't allow folks to bring it back into your past when they got one also. And so uh, I've learned that walking in the spirit is not something you do which is rigid. Walking in the spirit means like I did at the in, in, in Florida. No matter what theme park I went to, you know, um, we were just walking around and enjoying the festivities of the area. They had popcorn. They had ices. They, you see all types of people there. There were Hispanics, blacks, whites, Native Americans. Uh, there were uh, Latinos. There were short people, fat people, tall people, dark people, even someone in the NBA players there with his family. And look, they was all having joy, eating ice cream, looking at the fireworks. Oh, it was just an amazing feeling. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, this is how you're supposed to walk in heaven. You're supposed to enjoy the journey. No matter the opposition, no matter the setbacks, just knowing the presence of the Lord is in you and upon you is amazing. So I always bought heaven wherever I go. I was sitting down uh, before we even left Newark, headed for Florida, and um, my daughter had went to get something to eat, and I was sitting there just kind of trying to find my comfortable spot just to relax myself before the plane took off. And we got there real early because I don't like rushing to catch a plane. And I remember an um, a older woman was, was trying to sit down in a wheelchair 
uh, in front of me. You know, so anytime God starts putting stuff in front of my eyes, because heaven is so wide open, I already know somehow I may end up ministering to this lady or she's going to be included in my life at some level. I've learned the nature of heaven. It opens up. Ministry is bigger than a Sunday morning service and a Wednesday night Bible study. Those are all practice sessions. Once you walk out the building, the game has begun. And so you got to keep your spiritual antennas up. You got to be like the Lindsay Wagner from the Bionic Woman. Jamie, you got to do, 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 do. You got to be able to hear and see what heaven shows you. And the more you are aware of that, the more the kingdom of God can advance through you. Because when the kingdom makes a demand on you, which should come out of you is love, the heart of a servant, able to minister and help. And if there's a sign and the one that it needs to flow through you, then heaven will kick in and move in your behalf. But you got to be very sensitive because the Spirit of God is not always loud. Sometimes it's soft and it's gentle. It's a tug. It's a feeling, something you see, and you can't rest until you get it off your chest. So um, uh, I, I held the lady's chair down as you sat in the chair. All the ladies just said, thank you so much. And I sat in the chair. I said, ooh, okay, well, that was it. Yeah. Then what happened was, uh, you know, when you're at the airport and you leave to go get something to eat, you're not supposed to leave your bags. As a matter of fact, right now, they will confiscate your bags if you walk away and leave your bag someplace and go get food because they assume that maybe there's a bomb in the bag or that's how heightened our security is now. So you got to be by your bags. So when my wife goes off to go get food, I moved from my seat to my right and came all the way to my left and sat in her chair to watch her stuff. And it was an older European man sitting next to me, you know. And I just said, excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't want to crowd you up. I just want to say, he said, no, no, go right ahead. And just by me showing kindness, showing love, and even showing manners, it clicked in a conversation. And we just started talking. And this European man had to be close to, oh, what do you always say, he was 89, maybe 90, still in his right mind. He began to talk about his family to me and just share, open up about his son and how he was blessed. And he, he's just Lily McKenzie. He just opened up Pastor Sharon and, and the Lord said, he sees heaven on you. He sees something on you. And he says, and it's not you, Michael. He sees the presence of God. He sees heaven flowing through you. It's called the lifestyle of heaven. It comes through you. It drips through your pores and they see your smile. I don't be going around frowning every time I be with people frowning, I'm smiling, laughing. At that time, I had all of my teeth. Cause one of my teeth of two fell. I got to get it fixed on uh, Monday at the dentist. And I'm gonna talk about that in my in my in my presentation right now. So please listen. And um, and the man just started, you know, just talking. And what happened was, as he began to talk, the more I became the student. I wasn't the pastor, Mike. I was just the son, Mike, listening to this elder white man share wisdom. And then he looked over. He said, "Who's this?" I said, "It's my daughter." And then, and then uh, he's how old is she? I said, she's 18. She's about to go to college. And he left from talking to me and started talking to Micaiah about folks on her schoolwork and don't get caught up in the party and the crazy stuff. Stay focused, get them grades, get that degree. And he just really just drilled into her the importance of staying focused. And all of a sudden I realized that not only was I bringing heaven to the table, heaven was in him speaking to me. I, I just quiet down and allow him to minister to my daughter because he was sharing with me how God has blessed one of his sons so tremendously and how his son was involved in soccer and his son ran around the world and how so many things happened to this kid, this son of his. I, I won't tell you his name, but but to have this elder white man speak to me and then finally the $99,000 question came, he said, what kind of work you do? I said, I'm a pastor. He says, I knew it. He said, there's something about you. You're just such a sweet guy. That's what he just said to me. I said, well, praise God. He said, I can feel it from you. Oh, I love you. And we just started talking. And he had a plane to catch. And come to find out that the lady that was in front of me, that was to my right, who I held her chair down, she sat and ended up being his wife. And so, so guess what? If I, if I would have been mean and nasty over there, that would have affected my relationship with him to my left. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you talk about people because you might need them. You might have to humble yourself and eat some crow, eat some pie. Don't be so easy to burn your bridges. Don't be so quick to think you've made it and don't have to reach back to look at some of the doorways you came through. Learn to give honor through the doorways you came through. You learn to give honor. I'm telling you, man, you learn to give honor 
No matter wherever I go in life, I always look back at Church of Love days, honor the pastor Lagarde, his family, and I feel I owe that church a gratitude of, of uh, just thank you for the doorway. I don't go any place without honoring where I came through, the doorways I came through, who trained and equipped me. And if you think you arrived on your own, you are arrogant and you stuck up. You realize that God positions certain people to be a blessing to you. And if you can honor them, honor them with all your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. And so, you know, he got up to, he said, look, my plane got to go. And he took all my information, my email address, you know, and um, I could tell that God was a pretty wealthy guy. I mean, not going to say it, but I can tell. But, but see, the soul and light that's in me hit him. And it was the love I had by holding a professional conversation I didn't bring out the oil. I didn't throw oil at him. I didn't cast out devils. I didn't talk about Jesus coming soon. I didn't say hell's coming like the turn of, tongue of mighty fire. I just had a normal conversation. <laughs> and it just turned into just a heavenly conversation. I told you something. You don't always have to work up. It's just natural just in the conversation. Walk in the spirit means just enjoy life. Bring heaven wherever you go. Let your conversation be seasoned with salt. Show concern for others. Be into people's conversation. When they talk to you, don't cut them off because you're tired. Because they may be the only uh, Bible that they'll ever see. Excuse me. Is you. And so being friendly, being kind, uh, is some qualities of the fruit of the Spirit. I think the church should focus on. We're always into prophesying and casting out devils and being deep. But sometimes it's the fruit of the Spirit that delivers people, that, that opens people up, you know. And I remember his plane was about to leave and he went over to get his wife. And I and what happened was when he walked away from me, I said, Dad, God, maybe I should have prayed for him. And I thought he had actually walked away. What happened was he went to get his wife and spent her wheelchair around and walked them back across my pathway. He came close to me. Hey, I got to go. Nice talk. I said, wait a minute. And I put my hand on the chair and his wife and him. And I prayed a quick prayer. No, no more than 30 seconds for him and his wife to strengthen them. And all he did, he grabbed me and he said, thank you. That's all he did. And walked away. And I was so filled. I was I was filled with the presence of God. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, I mean, you get, when you get a little older, Pastor Sharon, Minister DJ, you know, I, I cry over everything. I just, any little thing that I see the presence of God move up, I cry. When I see senior citizens, I cry. When I see people struggling, trying to make it, I just, I got this thing on me now. I just weep for others. I just want to see others just make it because I know how it is to be stuck in a rut, stuck in a hole. And uh, and you and you have the power to help and people won't, won't help you. So when... I have the power to help. I help as much as I can. And so by me ministering and praying, I was that salt. I was that light. And really, God sat me on top of a hill because to be sat on a hill, or sat on a mountain, which really means sat on top of Mount Zion, I become noticeable. Out of all the folks in the, uh, in the airport about to catch the plane, he decides to open up and talk to me about his son. And the Lord says, you're learning how to walk. You, you've learned how to walk in a heavenly lifestyle. And it's not always how many scriptures you know. It's able to hold a professional level conversation and put away your cell phone for a few minutes and talk to people who to your left of you, to the right of you. And Pastor Sharon and LJM Taste and Andrea, you're going to find out that ministry is so much more larger than the church on Sunday morning. There are people sitting in airports want to be touched. People sitting in restaurants. People sitting in clubs. People sitting on baseball fields. People sitting by the beach or inside of a a gated community just waiting for someone to share the love of Christ just to show some love man just that kingdom lifestyle that thing called walking in the spirit you and I fulfill the dictations of the flesh and over and over I've been trying to show the church and equip my people from Joseph uh, to Moses uh, to any Old Testament patriarch I didn't touch the New Testament it seems the kingdom always seems to come through them while they're in their natural journey. You know, Joseph is kidnapped and taken away for 23 years, but kingdom shows up through this guy because he had a connection with God. Moses is supposed to have been aborted as a baby and his mother protected him. And he ends up being raised in an Egyptian household as his mother, the caretaker. <laughs> you know, and he grows up in, in Pharaoh's land, but still Hebrew in his heart. And no matter how much you try to run from it, that Hebrew thing naturally rolls to the top. 
and the deliverance gift is on him, even though it's not channeled yet. He was trying to defend someone and end up killing them, which is the manslaughter case, not murder. Uh, he goes on a 40 day journey, a 40 year journey, and he returns back to the place he started from. And still, naturally, he knew he had to be a deliverer. There was a, is a call of the kingdom on him, and he had to walk that thing out. And so my job today is train and equip many of you watching to let you know you were sent from heaven to come here to do something. And no matter how you try to fight it and run from it, it's still on your heart. And uh, we have a propensity to try to blame others and say, why you stop going to church? You no longer have a pastor. You no longer tithe and give an offering. You start pointing fingers at others. And then God said, you got three pointing back at yourself. So before you blame others for your reckless ways and your rebellious ways, why don't you turn around and look at how many things I've done for you when you was not deserving of it? Are you with me? So when I talk about sent from heaven and to bring heaven on earth, that is a practice. That's a lifestyle. And uh, Pat McDuffie cooked my cuz, which is so deep. You know, the Bible says pray without ceasing. And I used to think that meant you got to always be in prayer. Like, Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. When I sleep at night, Our Father. That's not what that means. Prayer means without ceasing means stay in heavenly communion with God. That's what prayer is. Stay in heavenly communion. That means even with my mouth closed, my heart and my mind is open to Christ. You know, it's funny. We uh, we were in the, the pool at the uh, at, at, at the uh, uh, hotel, you know, and um, and uh, you know, my daughter knows I hate cold water. I just I can't stand cold water. In order for me to get into a pool, I got to take it a step at a time and get in. And of course, I was getting in the water because I want to spend time with work, my daughter and my family. And I got halfway in with my waist. My daughter sneaks behind me and pushes me in. All right. So, of course, I get in the water and stop laughing somebody. So I get in the water, right, and I'm in the water, right? But as I'm in the water, I find that as I look at all my nieces and my cousins and family, I'm under my breath praying for them. I'm looking at them. I'm prophesying to their future. I'm looking at Micaiah become a full-grown lady. I'm praying and talking, talking and praying. And no one knows I'm doing this. I'm quietly doing it under my breath. I'm doing it in my mind. And I know people say, Pastor Mike, do you ever stop? No, because I believe I'm constantly and consistently covering my family because I know devils. Devils like to rob, murder, steal, and destroy. I'm always, and I always position myself when I'm with my family to stand in the back so I can always keep my eyes on my family. Even as my wife was driving, I put my daughter in the front seat. I sat in the back. That's to cover them. See, everything I do is positionally sent by God because I believe that uh, men of the household are protectors. I'm sent from heaven to bring heaven on the earth and bring that type of atmospheric change and deliverance. And um, Sister AC, I tell you, and it's funny, it's like you never stay out of communion with God. Like you're constantly thinking about the Lord. I'm just, I'm just talking to him. Now, while we're talking and praying, Cheryl Clark, uh, I'm still enjoying the festivities of the pool. I'm laughing with my daughter, cracking up jokes, just having, it's like I'm in two worlds at the same time. I like I got my foot in the third heaven, standing in spiritual authority in second heaven, yet swimming in the pool in the first heaven. Continual state of prayer saved my life. Yes, you know, it's not always this, your eyes closed. It's like you're open to God and you and him was always just talking, you know. And I'm just, I just be saying to God on my breath, God, you're so good to my family. You're just so good to us. I just thank you for it. I give you worship for it. And then um, just show how how kingdom lifestyle is just natural. It, like things flow without you having to stir things up. You just wait on God. God will bring things to you, you know. And I remember we was in the pool with my with my wife, right? We was in the pool, and this lady walks up to my wife and says, uh, she says, how old is your daughter, right? <laughs> and my wife said, my daughter's 18. She said, whew. We thought she was 13 because my I, I've been watching my son. He's been eyeing her now ever since he got in the pool. And it's like 13, there's like 10 other young ladies there too. I mean, beautiful. But my daughter stood out. And so he was, you know, looking at my daughter, you know. And the mother was saying to him, he said, look, you better watch what you're doing. And his father's big, big and tall. I guess he saw my muscles and stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, And so... The funny thing was is that the 
that conversation in the pool broke the ice between their family and my family. And we're all from New Jersey, you know, and, and, the, and the amazing thing was is that that kind conversation broke the separation and we started conversating, you know, and she was honest enough to say that her son found my daughter attractive. Right now, let me show you. Let me tell you, let me tell you, man, if you if you stay open to heaven, God will talk so much. You have to tell God, oh, wait a minute. I can't hear all this at one time. You you give me too much. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's talking all the time. God reminds me of a radio station. When you cut the radio on, you, you tune in with the channels. Right now. If you don't hear anything on your radio, it doesn't mean that the signal is not being sent. It means either radio is off or you got it on the wrong channel. See, once you line up with heaven, God is speaking all the time, Joan. God is speaking all the time early. God is speaking all, and you got to be very aware because God is always like, like many steps ahead of you and always trying to open you up to what I call signs in the one that's from heaven. So I'm talking about a lifestyle of heaven. Living heavenly while you're on the earth. And everything isn't bricks and mortar. Everything isn't Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And I know I sound rough sometimes when I teach this, but I've seen people who've been churchy on Sunday, but they're devilish on Monday. they mean and nasty on Tuesday. But they sing gospel songs on communion Sunday. I'm just saying, why is there two different worlds? Why do we got to work up something? As natural as I am a human being, I, I be human. I don't do human. I be human. It's human beings, not human doings. And a lot of time, when you're religious, you're trying to do something to be holy. No, holiness is just who you are. God gave us his holiness. When he said, be ye holy, for I'm holy, he gave us his holiness. Without holiness, no man should see God. That's why God gave you his holiness. Not your holiness. He gave you his. <laughs> so, evangelist, God bless you, Clyburn. And so you have to learn to let the spirit of heaven come through you naturally. It's within you. Christ comes. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that, and that life of Christ wants to flow through you naturally. And it flows through the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 uh, tells you some of the qualities of knowing when the fruit is flowing through you. And this is how you know when the kingdom of heaven is coming through. These are some of the attributes. First of all, love, which means a commitment to care. Joy is like an unspeakable happiness or unspeakable excitement. It fills you up, you know. Uh, peace means it's like the ace card, which sustains you in the midst of anything, holds you stable. Long suffering, which means you suffer long, but not in a sense of complaining, but a sense of expectation for God to finally do something. But you suffer long as he wants you to until he delivers. Kindness, which is one of the greatest keys to ministry. And we confuse kindness with nice. Christ was not always nice. He was always kind. He wasn't always nice. Because turning over tables and calling folks fools, I mean, that, to me, that's not real nice, but he's kind. I mean, kind is an attribute of love. I believe it's almost like love displayed. Kindness is love displayed in a certain way. You know, and I come to find out if a brother is very kind, that's an attractive card to women. Uh, women look for it for men who are kind, not mean, nasty, and jealous, and mentally controlling. And so... As I was in the pool, I was laughing at the mother because her son had a crush, of course, my beautiful daughter, Kaya, right? And so uh, <laughs> my daughter didn't think about that man, the man on the moon. But uh, I taught my daughter to be kind. Even when you turn somebody down, you don't be disrespectful because he finds you attractive or beautiful. And so, of course, I get up out the cold water and go over and get in the whirlpool, you know, because that's nice hot when I get in the whirlpool. I'm, I'm sitting back in a whirlpool. And the young man, who was the son of the mother, gets out the pool, walks over me, and shakes my hand, and introduces himself to me. He's, I don't want to be disrespectful. My name is such and such. Nice to meet you. And I, I, need to, I said, nice, man. That's good. And I said, listen, my daughter's not interested in dating anyone. I said, but she's friends. She could be friends with you. I have no problem with that. He said, thank you very much. I just want to make sure I'm honorable and respectful. I said, oh. And I just thought he was just so professional. So kind, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's kind of what we've gotten away from. I'm talking about a kingdom lifestyle, a heavenly lifestyle sent from heaven. You were sent from heaven to bring heaven on earth. And heaven displayed is not always displayed inside of church services. It's displayed in the pool. It's displayed on the hockey field. It's displayed in front of your family. There are There's an attribute of the fruit of the spirit 
that's supposed to come through you that shows the world around you that you were sent from some place. You were sent from heaven. I'm telling you right now, if you don't get anything I'm saying today, you were sent from heaven. And then God sent you in the earth so heaven can come through you, which was the kingdom of God. So you can invade every place around you so folks want to be attracted to, you know, the gospel of the kingdom. And many times when we talk about ministering to people, it doesn't always mean you're the one that scores the home run, that scores the run, or you hit the home run. You're the one that did the sinner's prayer, led them to Christ. Sometimes the things you do strengthen someone's faith. Sometimes someone may be doubting the existence of God, but because you were so kind, they say, you know what, maybe God does exist. You know, there's different things that heaven would do through you, George and Minister DJ, that would trigger folks to say, I want to be closer to Christ. You know what I'm saying? It's not always scripture. It's not always trying to cast out devils. Because many of us have been major in gifts of the spirit, but we sour fruit. No one wants to eat our watermelon. No one wants to eat our grapes because we're nasty, disrespectful, and gossipers. We tear other folks down and, and throw other folks under the bus when your day is coming. So you got to be very careful uh, about saying you're a Christian, but I don't see any fruit. I think we should be fruit inspectors. You know, we should be able to see, if we if we see orange and eat an orange, that should be an orange. If I see grapes it and eat the grape, it should taste like a grape. Don't look like a fig tree and all you got is leaves on it and there's no fruit. You know, it it, it it is it isn't it isn't producing what it's supposed to produce. Are you with me so far? So when I talk about sent from heaven, I'm saying you were sent from heaven to bring heaven on the earth. I'm gonna show you a couple of things. I'm gonna show you something real deep first. Go to Galatians chapter four, okay? Galatians four, and it says this, and I and I read this, I think yesterday. But let me just show you this, and. Paul, uh, who's writing to the, to the church at Galatia, said uh, someone crept into the church. He called these the Judaizers. And someone bewitched you and tricked you. That's right. We're supposed to be. And if we're sweet and juicy, Pastor Sharon, folks want to eat of us. They want to be around us. They want to hold conversations. They want to be around our space. They want to follow us. You know, sometimes when you're producing good fruit and you're like nice to be around, Folks want a whole conversation. They want to call you on the phone. They'll be around you. That's what. That's what really. When heaven comes, it doesn't always show up in signs, wonders, and fireworks. It shows up in in love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, being consistent, committed, gentle, self control. When when these nine attributes uh, show up, like a tangerine, love is a tangerine, and each piece represents one of these attributes. When people see that and they bite into it. Heaven has arrived. They taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, so while I'm in the, while I'm in the hot tub, you know, jacuzzi, I guess, and the man shook his hand, I said, man, God bless you, man. And when I, when, when I said Pastor McDuffie to him, there was a couple sitting under a a table, under a uh, an umbrella, maybe 10 feet away from me introducing myself to the kid. Now, when I said Pastor McDuffie, the couple said, she's the couple. Now I don't even know this couple. They said, she said, is your name Pastor McDuffie? I said, yes. You know what they said? They said, we watch you on Facebook Live. I said, whoa. He said, we, he said, he said I watch you all the time. Now look at this. See, I'm bringing heaven in the pool area. You know? So now this couple that I didn't know, but they knew me. He said, I watch your broadcast. You know why I'm on the broadcast? You know why I'm able to reach people? Because it's Mighty Sons of God Church, KOM, M318. Your support, helping me stay on the air. You're training people all over the world and don't even know. You're touching folks you don't even know you're touching. So when you give money to the poor, you're giving to those who are poor in spirit. When you sow seed, I told, I've been telling people for the longest, I asked 30 people to sow a gift of $100. I got five people. Still believe in 25 others to sow that seed. Because I believe when you give to poor ministry, you're touching lives. You're bringing heaven on earth. You're sent from heaven to bring something on the earth. So here I am. I'm a witnessing tool uh, inside of Florida at the pool area. Are you with me, Pastor Sharon? I don't have on a clergy collar. I got, on a, I got swimming trunks. I'm sitting in a hot tub. And I'm touching a young man that has a crush on my daughter. I got a couple 
who saw me and said, I remember you, you, you teach on Facebook Live. An older guy, cool guy. He, he said, you're Pastor McDuff. I said, yeah. He said, wow. I said, God, look at God. You don't know who's observing. You don't know who's learning from. You don't even know. Heaven's supposed to impact the earth. It's supposed to impact everything around me. So as I'm in the pool praying over my daughter, my nieces, my wife, my brother Jay, brother Kay, even a little, they have a little one-year-old son. I'm always constantly praying and touching these kids and talking. Heaven just opens up for me. I'm just, I'm just showing you different things. All right. Now, when you look in Galatians, the Judaizers had crept into the church and they were trying to trick the Christian Jews that faith in Christ Jesus is not enough. You guys got to go back and get circumcised again on your penis. We got to get you cut the skin on the eighth day like the tribe of Benjamin and pull the skin back again. And so we can cut. And so they was trying to get them to go back to the old Moses form of worship. That's called the work of the flesh. That's the work of the flesh. You're going back to something that God says we're no longer going down that road. And it looked like the Apostle Paul is frustrated with some of these tricksters. My fact, he he actually said one of the scriptures. I wish they would go and just uh, he, uh, he, he, he emasculate themselves, cut themselves off, because you causing so much frustration, and may the Lord judge you for trying to put people back in the flesh. He says, "I need for you to put your full faith in what Christ says, and when you learn to put your faith and be obedient to what Christ Jesus said." or be obedient to the gospel of the kingdom that's only achieved by faith in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, then you can walk in the spirit. That's why in Galatians 5 says in verse, um, verse 5, verse 16, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust, for the flesh lusts after the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish, but you are led by the spirit. You are not under the law. So the works of the flesh, and I, and I, and I won't go on to read these, but let me just first tell you what the foundation is. The work of the flesh is continuing to push the keeping of the Torah versus just saying faith and trust in Christ is how I get the kingdom to work for me. He says, stop looking to the arm of the flesh. When you start going at things on your own and it's not done by faith and persuasion in Christ, that type of living will produce works of the flesh. And he says, the work of the flesh is adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, hearsay, which means gossip, envy, murders, drunkenness, uh, revivals, uh, 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 revels, R E V E L R I E S, revelings, rever reveries, and of the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So he's saying, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, and from love comes joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So whoever puts their full faith in Christ and chase after him and make that part of them just being who they are, human beings and human doings, if you're trying to do something, that's the arm of the flesh that produces that. But when you just be who you are by faith in Christ, this stuff flows out of you naturally. I didn't work up that conversation at the airport with that older white man. I didn't get in the pool and go look for some lady to say, by the way, there's your son like my daughter. I'm just being me, enjoying the presence of God, talking to God, staying in communion with God, and God just start popping stuff up all around me. You know, somewhere when God start doing these things or bringing things from the unseen realm to the seen realm, you actually be chuckling a lot under your breath because you know it's God moving and God is confirming that the kingdom of heaven is upon you. Now, let me show you something. So in the book of Galatians chapter 4, and I taught this the other day, but let me teach you right now. Uh, Paul is training and equipping the Jewish Christians that you don't need to work the flesh. You don't need to cut your penis again. You don't need to cut the foreskin. Uh, you don't need no Judaizers, G -G -I 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 tricking you and deceiving you. 
And you know that same spirit is alive in some of our denominations, tricking you that the arm of the flesh takes you to heaven and make you holy. The only thing that brings you into the kingdom of God is full persuasion and trust in Christ. And your commitment to him is your duration. Stay with him no matter the test, the trial, the tribulation, the turmoil, the trouble, or the uh, or, or, or whatever the T is. Staying fixed on Christ and walking in love and walking in peace and joy and long-suffering, kindness, goodness. This shows that heaven is upon you and heaven is all over you. And it seems that when heaven starts to fall on you, it just pulls people to you. It opens up doors. It opens up conversations. It makes people talk to you. And then when you go to pray for people, the anointing kicks in with such power. It floors people, Shelly Ann. It just makes people say, man, I've I, I, I never met someone like you before. Man, when you talk, man, I feel it in my heart. You know, it just it amazes me what would have happened if we really understood that we were sent from heaven. Let me share another time. I'm sharing some testimonies about my trip to Florida, which I think was a great ministerial event. You know, uh, we had a little kid with us on the trip. And the uh, kid was one years old. I'm not going to give you no details. But I believe this, I think this one-year-old kid was called by God. I just think because as we were trying to hold family conversations about relationships and talk about things about future and, and um, my, my brother and, and, and a brother named Brother Kay and myself and my family were sharing. Every time we ate lunch or dinner, we, we opened up the floor and talked about life issues. It was a not just a vacation. It was a time of family gathering. And uh, I was the eldest there. I was, I'm the 57 year old man, you know, and uh, so I felt like I was the cover for the whole family. And so, uh, Pastor Sharon, you know, and uh, I like I took heaven with me, and heaven would show up. And somehow, this one year old kid, if he's that old, one years old, always seemed to make the most noise while I was talking. It's like every time I would talk, he would try to talk like I was talking. <laughs> It's time you're speaking in tongues. When you're a kid, he would look at me and his mouth just be moving and moving around because I really believe that children see the presence of God sometimes faster than people. I really believe that. I really believe that children have things to see and because they speak in baby language. They can't really express what they see, but they look at you. And he would stare at me like this and look at me and follow me. And even when his dad would get in front of him, he would push his dad out the way to just look at me. Because I know he recognized heaven coming through me. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that heaven is only coming through me. So don't take my point out of context. But I'm trying to show you that the children understand and recognize where the presence of God is coming through. And I was the least spokesperson doing most of the talking at the time while I had all my teeth in my mouth. All right. He would be looking at me and staring at me. And he would always make these loud noises. And it's funny, no matter where they put this kid at, you would put him across the room. He was somehow, some, somehow find himself back in the middle of a conversation, climbing up in his in his mom's or dad's lap, wanting to be part of the whole conversation. You know, and I just thought it was so amazing to watch uh, this young kid recognize the presence of God. And God kept saying to me, McDuff, you're sent from heaven. I sent you. You thought you came in this trip on your own. And he said, you did not want to come. But I sent you here because you are the covering for this family. And I need you here so heaven can spread. So you can minister to your family, minister to your nieces and your nieces' friends. Because I brought you here for a reason, for a purpose. This has been an evangelistic trip. See, and we don't think of evangelistic trip like that. We think evangelism only happen on Sunday mornings. And we go to a church with a choke collar on. Which means that God wants us to be kingdom minded no matter where we go and always looking and hearing God speak in so many ways. A smart preacher knows how to communicate the gospel sometimes without using scriptures. Let me say it, let me say it again. Sometimes your smartest believers know how to communicate the gospel without using scriptures. Let me give you a deeper one. Sometimes demonstrating heaven sometimes has nothing to do with any words. Preach the gospel, but only use words when necessary. <laughs> What a powerful statement to hear to say all the time, because people look to see a Bible that they can look at, that they can observe. It's not the telling of the scriptures of Dr. Michelle Hall. It's a lifestyle. It's a commitment to love. And also people look for the freedom of Christ. Folks hate to be bound up religiously. 
I met mean, people say, I'm not going to church, but folks be making, you can't do this, can't do that, stay away from this, stay away from that. They make it seem like you can't swim, you can't can't go bike riding, you can't you can't do anything. It's like, we're like we up in this little corner in the space and can't get involved. That's not the Christianity that I believe. Fresh from heaven without sin, trying to repeat what the Lord was saying to you before he hit the first heaven. Oh, Jesus, Pastor Sarah, <laughs> you're killing him already. Hello, angel. And, um, and so the so the, so I was really moved by this one year old kid. I I already told uh, Jane we go, I gotta go see this kid again because uh, uh, I, I hate to see him uh, like a year two years later he done growing up. I hate to see him in this stage because such the cutest little kid in the world, man. I just such a just just a doll. And on the last night of him being with us, he sat at the dinner table, and uh, the whole night he kept staring at me. I'm just telling you, man. He was just kept staring at me. He was eating like little Cheerios. Give him food, and every time he he go, da, 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 ga, ga, ga. he would say ga 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 ga, right? And sometimes I would purposely slide my chair over to sit behind his dad, so that he would not pay attention to me. But he would push his dad out the way, He'd take his left hand, and push his father out the way so he can look at me while I'm talking. And look at me, and every time he eat, he look back and look at me. And God said, He sees heaven, He sees it on you, you know. And then the last thing was we came outside of the restaurant. He was with his mom. And uh, he had a habit of taking his pointer finger and pointing at everything. Point. We came outside. The strangest thing happened. He pointed up to the sky and said, Gee, he said, gah, 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 gah. I swear, I know this kid was saying, God made the skies. God made the heaven. I know that's what that kid wanted to say. And his mom looked at me and said, Mike, look at, look at my son. I said, yeah, this is, this is a very special kid. See, heaven recognizes heaven. I was able to recognize that this is something special about this kid. And uh, when he left, I really kind of sad because I really wanted to stay a couple more days because I just, I just really, when I see God moving in certain things, I, I take a liking to it because I see that God wants to uh, unveil and, and unravel His voice through so many ways and means. But you can't get so rigid. You can't get so stiff. You can't. Tell God who to use to speak to you. You got to be open to God at all times, at all ways, you know. In the book of Galatians, uh, he goes on in, in chapter four, look at this verse. And Paul is saying, he says, tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham, Abraham had two sons, the one by the bond woman, which is Hagar, and the other by the free woman, which was Sarah, his wife. But he who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh. That's Ishmael. And he that was born of the free woman through the promise. That is Isaac. Verse 24 says, which things are symbolic. But these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, which gave birth to bondage, which is Ishmael or the physical mountain, which represents the old way of Jewish worship coming to God through Moses, through the Torah which is Hagar, but this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. It's a physical written on stone tablets, and it corresponds to the physical Jerusalem, which now is, but, but, but look what it says, and it is in bondage with her children. So Paul is saying this: there is a Jewish people that celebrate Jerusalem, but they're still in bondage. Yeah, God will give you the promised land, God will put your feet back on the land, but you're still in bondage to the law, bondage to the arm of the flesh, bondage to an earthly, limited city of Jerusalem. But there's a greater, there's a greater one. There's a Jerusalem that's not made by human hands. It's made by God. Look at verse 26. I think it's the biggest verse in this book. But the Jerusalem above is free. Now, which Jerusalem are you talking about? There's one on the earth that I went to in 2013. They call it Palestine, the state of Israel, all right? All right, and uh, and in that state, in that uh, Palestine is the city called Jerusalem, and in Jerusalem is the temple called the Temple Mount at this time, which the Jews worshiped it, and they said God lived in this physical building, and to meet God, you had to go to this building or this temple and bring sacrifices. And Paul was saying that system is dying, that covenant is coming away. That which is born by Ishmael, born by a physical mountain and a physical city of Jerusalem, that's passing away. He says, but there's another Jerusalem which is above. It's free. All right. It comes down from above. This is the third heaven, Jerusalem. All right. And look at this shocking verse. 
which is the mother of us all, which is the mother of us all. Listen to me, which is the mother of us all. Notice he doesn't call Jerusalem the father of it all, but it's the mother of it all. And I may say it in another scripture in the Bible, I haven't read all the Bible to that degree yet, but in this particular scripture, it says it calls the Jerusalem from above the mother of us all, all right? Now, why are you saying this? Because mother means birth, form, the matrix. I come out of my mama's womb, all right? So, uh, so I ended up in my mama's womb, and of course, she conceived me, and of course, the year of 1962, but uh, Nikita lied, I was born 1963. So my mother carried me, she formed me, whatever she ate, I ate, whatever she experienced, I experienced, so I'm actually a result of how my mother formed me. But before I met my mama, I met my dad. My dad was a seed carrier. So my dad was the father, and my mama, or my mother, was Ruby. So I didn't start out from heaven. I was placed in heaven. I started out from my father. See? We came out of Christ. That's number one. Then I came into heaven. That's number two. That's the mother. So before the mother, there's the father. So before I, I met heaven, I was in Christ first before time. So I went from my father, God, to heaven, which is my mama. And then heaven sent me to earth in 1962. And I took on a body and was born July 1963. So I went from God Almighty, sanctified me, put me aside in heaven, third heaven, shot me to the second heaven, into the first heaven, and put me inside my physical father, Isaac, and Isaac put me in my mom. Okay, now watch this. When I was born, Nikita, when I was born, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So something spiritually died in me when I was born into this planet, a law of sin and death. But then I met a preacher in 1980, Dr. Dean Trillier, who led me back to the Lord. I could have been saved or rededicated, what you want to call it, and was reconnected. So I became what you call born again. Now, what does born again mean? Let me be glad you asked that question. Go to John chapter 3. Go to John chapter 3. I'm talking about sent from heaven and the lifestyle of heaven. I'm trying to show you how to walk in heaven naturally. Always got to work it up. When you go to John chapter 3, it says there was a man of the, of the Pharisees who was like the main religious enemy of of Jesus, the pharisaical order named Nicodemus. So out of all the Pharisees, this guy, Nicodemus, recognized something on Jesus. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So he's not your normal pharisaical leader, pharisaical citizen, that practice the pharisaical order. He's a ruler, someone in charge, okay? And this man came to Jesus by night Perventure to say, they want no one to know he was coming here, said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher sent from God, which means I hang out with other Pharisees and we talk and they say God sent this guy. But it wasn't enough for the Pharisees to yield their power to him. They knew he was sent by God. They knew he brought heaven to earth, but they didn't like his style. They didn't like his methodology. They didn't like the message he bought. And so they wasn't ready for it. So they decided to not to embrace him. Stay with me. <coughs> Stay with me. Mm. Excuse me. Uh. <laughs> Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher sent from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God was with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Gloria Moody, most assuredly I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. For which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Watch this. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Now, when you study the Greek text of you must be born again in the original Greek language it really means you must be sent from above or you can also say it like this you must go back and be resent again or go back and get your original spirit that was in God the Father before sin ever touched, ever touched you 
when you are born again, you get your original spirit back that sin never touched because the blood of Jesus blotted out your iniquities. So when you're born again, it's like you started all over again and God gave you a recreated spirit that's not tainted by sin. So positionally, you as holy as you ever will be because Christ's blood took everything away. So, so, so what happened is I go back to God who resends me from heaven. He recreates me and sends me from heaven. He said, I'm going to give you the real Jerusalem. It comes from above. I'm going to drop heaven in your spirit. And now wherever you go, you carry heaven with you. That's why in Luke 17, Jesus is the real kingdom is within you. When I receive Christ as my savior and I serve him as Lord, I carry the kingdom of God with me. So when I'm swimming at the pool, the kingdom is in the pool. If I'm going to any rides, any amusement park, the kingdom is with me. If my family's walking in front of me, I'm walking in the back of them, the kingdom is around them. See, I talk like this all day long because it's the heaven above that is my mother, okay? It forms me. It molds me. It makes me who God called me to be. That's why it says in Galatians chapter 4, okay? In Galatians chapter 4, stick with me. I'm almost done. Okay, it says in Galatians 4, verse 26, but the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has had a husband. Now, we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh, that persecuted, all right, let me know how y'all do, okay? He was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free Keep going. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ hath made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you have become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You will attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit early wait for the expectation of righteous by faith, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision mean anything, but faith working through love. He said, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole loaf, the whole lump. I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross have ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. Now, that's a nice translation. It really means cut your own private part off. That's what Paul was saying. Didn't sound nice. Kindly checking somebody. Now, now, so he goes on to say, if heaven comes down and heaven sent you and heaven flows through you, this is the evidence that heaven flows through you. For you, brother, have been called to liberty. Only don't use your liberty as an opportunity for your flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, let me stop there and let me begin to bring this thing out home. I think I've been close to an hour. Which means, how do I know when heaven is on me and upon me and around me? How do I, what's, my, what's the proving ground that heaven is walking in me? There's a sense of love, a sense of kindness. There's a sense of peace, long suffering. These things come to me like fruit. It's sweet, it's juicy, 
and people want to talk and be around you and you're ministering through a doorway of love. Now, quoting scriptures, performing signs and wonders, that's all secondary. What he says is the proof that heaven's upon you is that you love and serve one another. So as you're helping people, you know, enjoying people, being around people, showing love to others, uh, that is like love served. And we quote a lot of love scriptures, but really the, the word love means to have the commitment to care one for another. That means I care about my sister. I care about my brother. All right. It's not I got mine. You get yours. That's not love. When love is possessing you, something in you wants to give, whether it's your time, words of advice, you're interested in empowering each other. What I saw this past week in Florida was the kingdom of heaven upon my family. And, uh, and the respect that I received from my nieces and my family was outstanding. And I can tell my brother Jay and his wife did a tremendous job of raising their daughters. And brother Kay and his wife, a uh, tremendous couple to be around and a family friend was around and I noticed that whoever was in this circle, thir about 13 of us including the little baby, it was a it was a basket full of heavenly love and God allowed us to fellowship. We ate, laughed, joked, went to the park, uh, went to Universal Studios, uh, walked around, enjoyed life, but the presence of God was there. The love of God was just, uh, just being released and it wasn't something I had to try to work up uh, we were the body of Christ. We were the church. We were even had a good time at this restaurant the last night. The girls got up with dancing the old 70 music and running around and having a good time. And and every time I'm around my crowd, you know, I just always find myself praying, talking to God on my breast and cover my family, Lord God. Cover KOM, cover M318. I constantly around the clock. And it wasn't in bondage. It wasn't something I was working up. It just naturally flowed out of me. Now, if you look at my mouth, if you notice I have a, a one of my cap fell out right there. So right? y'all see it, okay? Stop laughing. And um, I'm due to go to the dentist on tomorrow to get my real tooth put back in, slide it back in there, and it'll be okay. But this is something I'm going to show you. Uh, I was given about three or four warnings to get the tooth fixed because I couldn't have time, didn't find time. And guys, okay, you keep not trying to find time. We're going to make sure, we show sure you what happens when you don't find time. Well, by not finding time, I accidentally swallowed the tooth, <laughs> all right? So I had to go around for the last couple of days on Friday, Saturday. Let me see when it happened. It happened. Was it Friday? I think Friday, Saturday, and then, of course, Sunday without any uh, thing in my tooth, in my mouth here. So the tooth is missing. And this is something I taught the other day. God can warn you and show you things to come, and you have to readjust your lifestyle to align with God, yes. And a lot of times... God will warn us and tell us things to do to change our love work or change our lifestyle because heaven wants to flow through us. But there comes the times, the time glory it was just too late. We don't listen. We ask folks to pay their tithes, give their offerings, stay committed to the call, stay committed to your call, be concerned for your family, pray for your family, be there for each other, watch over each other, wash each other's feet. You know, these are mechanisms of walking in heaven's power. Heaven power is not because you got the strength of Hulk and can lift a car. And we always think of power of might and bombs, but there's a kingdom called love that will penetrate hearts. You want to stop the next killing? You know, sometimes we got to drop a baptism of love on someone. And that guy will say, you know, I was on my way to kill somebody, but I feel that I have to stop and change my mind. Uh, I was about to stab my mom, but uh, I ran to one of those um, guys sent from heaven and he touched my life. See, when you start praying and ministering out of relationship and not just something you work up on a Sunday morning, it kind of flows from a conversation or it flows from being in the pool, it flows from being in the gym, or it flows from just sitting next to someone. This stuff kind of unfolds in the front of you. That anointing, that presence is so much more powerful. I share with you today with my heart what God laid in my heart. And many of you who are watching me, you have the power to bless. I'm going to ask that all of you today go to the cash app. Dallas sign Pastor Michael 7 to sow your seed today. Those who can also, you have to use the uh, Gmail account, supermite777 at gmail.com. If you're learning something today, you can pay your tithes and your offerings. If your tithes and offerings are to the mighty sons of God fellowship church, please 
attach that to your gift and I make sure our church gets that. But if you're sowing the seed into Pastor Duffy's ministry or his life, you can do the, do the, do this at this time. And uh, there's still a challenge on the floor. 30 people that sow $100 seed. Five people did it so far. 25 haven't. And I'm still believing God for that. And I want to pray that those that bring their tithes and offers, may the devourer will be rebuked and be cast down. And may the Lord stop the enemy before he rise, raises his ugly head against you. I shut him down and I rebuke him in the name of Jesus. And I pray for my listeners and my watchers and my observers today that they become a people that will chase after the things of the kingdom and let the kingdom unfold naturally. Not something you work up, not something you force, something that just flows from the, in, from the depth of the heart. Let the love go from heart to heart to breast to breast. Thank you, Lord God. Meet every single need. And Lord God, when the enemy comes in like a flood, we shut him down in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, I ask a special blessing over AC, Andrea Carwell, one of my partners. God bless you. Uh, I also say a prayer over Camelia Santos. I say a prayer over Gloria Moody. I say a prayer over Nikita Lai. I say a prayer over CJ. I say a prayer over Pastor Sharon Huntley Houston, my partner, this image for you. I say a prayer over Angel Morrison. I say a prayer over Dr. Michelle Hall. I say a prayer over Donna Knapp. I say a prayer over uh, Shelly Ann Thompson, this image for you. I say a prayer over Major Roberson. I say a prayer over Minister DJ, this image for you. I say a prayer over Pat McDuffie Cook, my family. I said prayer over John Brown. I said prayer over Evangelist Clyburn. I said prayer over George Arnett. I said prayer over Joan uh, Chisholm. I pray. I said prayer over Andrea Carl with this image for you. I said prayer over Erling Grissom. I said prayer over uh, uh, Linda Jones. This prayer is for you. I said prayer over Cheryl Clark. I said prayer over. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to cover everybody who's watched today. Uh, Lillian McKenzie. I say a prayer over Thaddeus Parker, Virginia Shoulders. I say a prayer over Dina Car Carroll, Sharon Bivens. I say a prayer over Cheryl McDonald. And those of you who've been watching, we're going to ask that you be obedient to the prophet. Go to the cash app, sow a seed today. If you watch today, we ask that you sow into our life a carnal thing, that I've sold spirit things, spiritual things to you. So I just release the kingdom of heaven to those watching. Those who participate, those who've learned, we thank you, Lord God, that heaven continue to unfold in our lives all around us. And Lord God, my partners, my tithers, my givers, first, I pray for you that may God continue to open doors for you. May you be sensitive to the warning of God and be able to make those changes. And I pray, Lord God, you meet every single need according to your riches and glory. We thank you for your presence in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching, Mighty Sons of God Fellowship Church. Thank you, elders, ministers. Thank you for those who didn't watch today. Appreciate your prayers. God bless and love you.